Hi guys, in this video we're going to have a look at estimating. Okay, so the first thing to remember with estimating is what everyone always forgets is that nine times out of ten we always round to one significant figure. Now if you don't know how to round to one significant figure, check out my video on how to round to significant figures and decimal places, otherwise this will be a little bit um, confusing for you. Okay, but that's the first thing to remember with estimating, you need to round everything to one significant figure. Okay, remember that, you shouldn't go too far wrong. So, let's have a crack at a few examples. Here's the first one, so 5.3 times 9.6, now obviously I don't want to work that out because estimating is when we have an educated guess. Okay, so we're going to change these numbers or round them to make this calculation a bit easier. And like I said at the start, we round it to one significant figure to do that. So the first significant figure of 5.3 is the 5. I have a look at the next number, which is a 3, and that tells me I need to round down, in which case the 5 stays the same. So I change 5.3 to 5. I'm still going to times, and what am I going to change this to? Well, 9 is the first significant figure. The 6 tells me that I need to round it up, in which case the 9 becomes a 10, and don't forget I need to replace that 6 with a 0. Okay, all I do now is just work this out. 5 times 100, 500. So the estimate for this calculation is 500. Okay. Next one here, exactly the same thing, I'm going to round each of these numbers to one significant figure. So I'm looking at the 6, that's the first significant figure. 7 tells me I need to round it up, so the 6 becomes a 7, and don't forget to add the 0 to make it a 70. Then I'm going to times it by 409, again I'm going to round this to one significant figure. The 4 is the first significant figure, the next number is a 0, clearly going to round down. So it stays as a 4, don't forget to add two zeros there. So 409 becomes 400. Then I'm going to divide it by 182. The 1 is the first significant figure. The 8 is the next number, which tells me I need to round up. So the 1 becomes a 2, exactly the same thing. Don't forget to add your two zeros for the 8 and the 2. All we now need to do is work this out. Well, let's do the top line first. If I just do 7 times 4... That's 28, and I'd add three zeros, one, two, three, and I'm going to divide that by 200. Okay, let's simplify this a little bit. I've got zeros on the top and the bottom, so I'm going to cancel those out, and cancel those out. Essentially, I've just divided by 100 on both the top and the bottom, which leaves me with 280 divided by 2, which is much easier, and we get the answer of 140. So again, the estimate, the educated guess of that is around about 140. Let's have a go at this one. So again, I've got 625. First significant figure is the 6. I'm going to look at the 2. 2 tells me to round down, so it stays the same. And I add my zeros. 3.4. 3 is the first significant figure. 4 tells me to round down. So it stays as 3. I don't put 3.0 because it's just a 3, so it stays the same. I don't need to worry about the extra 0. Times by 9.6. Well, 9 is the first significant figure. 6 tells me I need to round up, so we need to add 1 to the 9, so it becomes 10. Again, 10.0, there's no point doing that, so I'll leave it as uh, 10. Obviously, the 600 stays the same. 3 times 10 is 30. Again, I divide the top and the bottom by 10 by cancelling out a 0. So I'm left with 60 divided by 3, which of course is 20. Okay, there's those three. Let's carry on and have a look at some a little bit tastier ones. So a 38.1. First significant figure is the 3. 8 tells me to round up, so that becomes a 4, and I add just one zero because again, 40.0 is just the same as 40. 50 point th sorry, 53.2, 5 is the first significant figure, 3 tells me to round down, so it goes to 50, or 5 and then add the 0. And this one here, 2.15, 2 is the first significant figure, 1 tells me to round down because it's the next number, so that stays as a 2, plus, and again, 2 is the first significant figure, but this time 9 tells me to round up, so that becomes a 3. 
Again, four times five is 20. Then I've got my two zeros, so I put my two zeros on. And then two out of three is five. Okay, so 2,000 divided by five, probably easy to go 20 divided by five, which is four. Then I had the two zeros that I covered up. Or you can just use bus stop, whichever you want. Key thing with estimate, and I probably should have said this at the start, is you must show your work in. So whatever you round it to, you must show that in your answer. Okay, you can't just put 400 and that's it. You've got to show what you round it to. Okay, so let's have a go at this one then. So again, first significant figure. Zero tells me to round down. So it stays as 10. Two is the first significant figure of 27.7. Next number is the 7, that tells me to round up, so I add 1 to the 2 so it becomes a 3, don't forget to add the 0 to make it 30. 5 is the first significant figure, 8 tells me to round up, so it's a 6, then I take away 3.2, 3 is the first significant figure, 2 tells me to round down, so it's 6 take away 3. 10 uh, times 30, 300. 6 take away 3 is 3, 300 divided by 3 is 100. So they're sort of like the, the pretty standard uh, estimating questions that you can expect to see. The next couple are ones that you need to be aware of that might trip you up. So let's have a look at this one. So again, the 5 is the first significant figure. 8 tells you to round it up, so that goes to a 6. And, and 315, 3 is the first significant figure. Next number is 1, so I round down, so it stays the same, and I add my zeros. Now this is where people make a mistake. They either round it to 0 or 1. That is incorrect. 5 is the first significant figure. 3 tells you to round down, so it stays as 0 0.5. If I then just work this out, uh, 6 times 3 is 18. Add the two zeros. Divide by 0 0.5. Now this is where people, again, can go wrong. If you divide by 0 0.5, essentially think of it like money. You're saying, how many 50p's go into 1,800? Well, it's going to go in twice as many times. So in fact, when you divide by 0 0.5, because it goes in twice as many times, essentially you double it to get 3,600. A lot of people think you half this. It's not true. Think about how many 50p's will go into it, or twice as many will go into it. So essentially, whenever you divide, you double it to get 3,600. Okay, so again, two things to work, uh, watch out for there. Round that to one significant figure. Don't have it as a 0 or 1. And then when you are dividing by 0 0.5, remember you double it because it goes in twice as many times. Okay, a few more examples to have a look at. Give me a second to swap them over. Okay, same sort of thing with this one. First significant figure is a 4. 1 tells us to round down, so that goes to 400. Times by, again, the 6 is the first significant figure. 9 tells me to round up, so it's a 7. And again, this one here. 0 is not the first significant figure. The 1 is the first significant figure. Then obviously 8 tells you to round up, so this is 0 0.2. Uh, if I then work out the top, 4 times 7 is 28. Add my two zeros, divide by 0 0.2. Now exactly the same thing. You can think of it as this, as 20 p's. How many 20 p's will go into 2,500? Well, they're going to go in five as many times. So essentially, you will times that by five. However, another strategy, if you're not too sure about when it comes to dividing by 0 0.5 or 0 0.2, is just to change the fraction slightly. And if you times the top and the bottom by 10, you'll have 28,000 divided by 2. And then obviously you can just work this out to get 14,000, which is your answer. So it's just another way of doing it. You can times this by 5, because 20p goes in 5 as many times. Or change the fraction by times in both top and bottom by 10 to get this, which obviously then gives you a, no uh, a nice answer there of 14,000. Just another little trick to bear in mind. Uh, this one here, same idea. 6 is the first significant figure. 7 tells you to round up. So seven times, and again, one is the first significant figure. Nine tells you to round up, so it becomes a two. And I'm going to divide that by 
well, that's the first significant figure. Three tells you to round down, 0 0.05, which is 1,400 divided by 0 0.05. Again, you could think how many 5Ps will go into 1,400. So in other words, you're going to be timesing this by 20, because that's how many 5Ps are in a pound. Okay, it goes in 20 times. Or you can use this trick again. So I'm going to times by 100 this time to make the denominator a whole number. And then I'm just doing, what, uh, what is that, 140,000 divided by 5. Now you can use the bus stop to help you with this. So how many 5s go into 1? None. So I cross the 1 out and carry it over. How many 5s go into 14? Well, that's 2 with a 4 left over. How many 5s go into 40? Uh, that's an 8. And then how many fires go into 0, none, 0, none, and 0, none? So you get the answer of 28,000. So again, just another little trick. You can either times that by 20 to get 28,000, or again, you can make the denominator a whole number and do a division. Entirely up to you. Both ways are acceptable. But again, make sure you show you're working as far as what you've rounded it to. What you can also be asked is to estimate what the square root of a number is. Now, all this requires you to do is know your square numbers. So I know that the square root of 64 is 8. 8 times 8 is 64. So I know if I square root 64, I get 8. I also know that if I square root 49, I get 7. And obviously, the square root of 60 is somewhere in between these two square roots. So as long as you quote an answer, that is between 7 and 8, as long as it's not 7 and as long as it's not 8, you should get the mark. Obviously, the, the most obvious one would be some, go somewhere in the middle, so like a 7.5, but they usually let you have anything between 7 and 8. But do not put 7 and 8 for obvious reasons, because the square root of 64 is 8, the square root of 49 is 7, so obviously the square root of 60 will not be one of those two, but it could be anywhere in between. Same thing with this one. We know that the square root of 100 is 10, we know the square root of 81 is 9, so 95 is in between these. So again, an answer between 9 and 10. Okay, any answer, but not 9 and not 10. So that's a classic example there when you're estimating these, you need to know your square numbers. Now, in all the examples that we've looked at, it's been rounding to one significant figure. So these two here are just examples of when rounding to one significant figure doesn't quite work. So if I was to rhyme to one significant figure, in this case, this would become 50, and I would divide this by 8. Now, 50 divided by 8 is not going to be a nice number. Um, it's just meant to be quick and easy when you estimate, meant to be able to do it in your head. So obviously, you'd half, half, and half again. It's not nice. So what you, in this particular case, would try and round these to numbers that do work nicely. And again, times tables are crucial here, because I know that if I round this to 48... OK, divided by, and again, keep this as 8. Because I know my 8 times table, I know that 48 divided by 8 will give me 6, which is a much, well, 8 is more accurate because it's closer. 48 is closer to 48.13 anyway, so it's a much better estimate or more accurate estimate than this, but also it's an easier calculation. So I always try and round to one significant figure, but if it doesn't quite work, by all means, try something slightly different that does work. Same thing with this one here. If I round this to one significant figure, I get five. Well, nothing wrong with that. But if I round this to one significant figure, it's going to give me the square root of 40. And again, I don't know what the square root of 40 is, so this is, I now I can't progress with the question. But what I do know is that 35.71 is very close to the square, uh, to 36. And I know that the square root of 36 is 6, so 5 times 6 is 30. Okay, so I don't want to use that one, which is the one significant figure. I don't want to use that one. I'm going to use numbers that are slightly uh, different, so not rounded to one significant figure, but then make my actual working much easier to, uh, to do. Okay, but always write it down, and then obviously then you can then change it if you need to. So hopefully that helps explain estimating, guys. Say so if you're unsure about how to round to significant figures, make sure you check out that video. And uh, yeah, just remember, round to one significant figure, you shouldn't go far wrong. Thanks for watching, guys. Cheers.